Hi, in this video I'm going to go ahead and animate the two degree of freedom system that we solved in a previous video. If you haven't yet watched that video, you should go back and watch it now. As a reference, this is the figure that we'll be using in the video. It consists of two masses, M1 and M2, riding along a frictionless surface. The masses are connected together with a spring of stiffness K2, and mass 1 is attached to the wall with a spring of stiffness K1. The x1 and x2 coordinates are as shown, and an external load F of t is applied to mass 2. I've shown animations previously in other videos in much more detail, so for this purpose I'm just going to use some of the code and some of the methods I use there. If you would like more detail on that, I refer you to those videos. So the first thing I'm going to do is revisit my video on the numerical solution for a multi-degree of freedom system. This was a three-degree of freedom system, and we're going to just take the solution. We're going to edit it a little bit very quickly to make it uh, compatible for this model. So this is the GitHub repository. If I click here and get the raw code, then I can just copy it into a new document. Let me save this document, give it a name. I'll call it solve 2d of f dot pi. Let's put it in a new folder. And in this environment, I've got pi game. I've installed matplotlib. NumPy is in there and scipy. So these libraries up top here have, have all been installed already in my virtual environment that I'm using. All right, so let's fix the model to make it a two degree of freedom system, the correct one for our purposes. This was K1 plus K2. This of course disappears, the third row. Uh, this would be K2 minus K2. And again, this is just from the previous video, minus K2. And then this would just be M1, 0, space, and M2. And then the last row disappear. So this is the mass and stiffness matrix that we derived in the previous video. And what we want to plot here is going to be a little bit different. We don't need X3. We want to plot, I guess, y3 and y4, that's all. Change this down here. And I think that's pretty much ready to run. The only thing is, over here in the time-stepping part, I'd actually like to do the Runga Kutta method. Now, I showed how to implement Runga Kutta in a previous video, and this is it here. And I'm going to go and get the code again from there. So I don't have to retype it. Save a bit of time. And specifically what we want are these functions here at the top. This part here, the wrong cuts a step. You just copy that and I'm going to paste that in the top of my document. All right, and this can be cleaned up a little bit, this function. And according to our model, this should be F1 because it's applied to mass 2 and that coordinate corresponds to F1 in the force vector. This can be deleted. All right, and then over here, um, well, we can fix this. We need mass 1, mass 2, and oh, I don't know, let's just make that 2 and 1 just arbitrarily. K1 and K2, the spring stiffnesses are, we'll just call it 3 and 2. Again, just totally arbitrary. Uh, time step, I prefer to call that delta T. And we'll just make this 0 0.1, I think. Since we're using a Runga Kutta fourth order, even a time step of 0 0.1 would be very, very accurate. Now, I think I want to do this a little bit differently, the way I handled the time last time. Let me just say time equals numpy a range. And I want it to go from, say, 0 to 80. 
We'll make it in steps of delta t. Forcing function will have a magnitude. We'll just set it to zero for now, but f naught would be, let's just leave it zero. Omega, we'll just make one for now. That's just arbitrary. So then let's set up the initial state vector. We'll call that y, and we'll say np array Well, it's got to have four elements, so let's just make it four zeros for now. We can always change that later. Maybe we'll just make the last one a one to give it a very small displacement. And I guess we'll just put the DIF here as two equals two. Um, this needs to be changed here because these matrices are now two by two. So this would go from zero to two and from zero to two. And this would now go from two to four. Actually, two to three, four is not inclusive. Two, four, and this would be two and four, and zero to two. All right, and then I think the only other thing I need to do is maybe this loop. I need to take out. Okay, so I want to just say for t in time, and and um, we're going to take the force out here because we now have a function to handle that. And I'm going to say I made it lowercase y, didn't I? So I'm going to say that y. I don't have to say y in u. I can just say y equals y plus, and then I just use this sort of function here, rk4 step. So I'm just using this. Just the rk4 step. Take out the colon, and the dt is actually delta t. And that's it. I don't need to say y equals y nu. I can say here f of t. The force is 1. Let me just check this here. The force is in, it's acting on mass number two, so that's why it's F index one. So F of T index one. And this would be two, not three and four, but two and three. These are the position vectors X1 and X2, well, the positions X1 and X2. And plot the results. I don't need this anymore because I can just plot time. All right, let's try to run it. Object is not callable. Oh, I know the problem is here. I've got F, that remnant. I've redefined F, so I don't need it down there anymore. That's why it's not callable. But I'm realizing this here also needs to be dimension 4, but I can just call that zeros 4. Let's try to run that. You know what? This is because it should be a pen, not extend. I could use either for most things, but in this case, I need to have an extend. I mean, an append. Uh, confusing myself. And then I think here, yeah, let's just put this on the same chart. We'll just plot the force on the same chart. We'll do this. Let's make a single quote. Oh, let's add a grid for good measure. Here, yeah. since we changed that, and this is a small y. And over here, I don't need this capital Y at all. All right, let's try to run it now. There we go. So we've got a result. So now what we want to do is, uh, is to animate this. 
So in order to animate it, we're going to create a new file. Let's just call this two, make it the number two, dof.py. So for the starting code on the animation side, I'm going to go back to the double pendulum problem, and this is that video, and use some of the code we created there, which was also in GitHub. And I can just paste this in this new file. Right, and the starting point up here is I've got to get rid of these Runga Kutta stepping functions and replace it with the ones we just created here. All right. And then I'm going to take out the update that we're going to redo. The render function we're going to redo. Okay, and the starting point is a screen. We've defined some colors. Uh, this offset I don't need. Don't think I need light blue anymore. These are the same parameters I had before. In fact, I can just copy all of that, I think. Delta T. I think we have it all the same anyway. All of this here. <clears throat> Those are the parameters. Oops. Starting value for Y. copy all of this in there so I can take the y out since we've pasted it and i think that is about everything from here a inverse we want oops That's it. The rest is just the time stepping part, which we'll treat differently because we're now in an, a game loop. Okay, inverse. All right, and now this is the game loop. In fact, we don't need fonts. We'll take that out. While true is still the same, and then all of this here can go away for now. All right, so what I've left in here is this while true loop. Um, I've set up here at the top, create a screen, fill it with white. Uh, we don't need the trace. Uh, display update, I probably don't even need it there because I'm going to update it in the game loop. And that's it. This should put a white screen on, uh, a white window on the screen, and it should allow me to quit by clicking on the X. So let's run it and make sure this is working. And of course, well, it's not solved to DOF now, it's just to DOF.py. Expect an indented block line 28. Uh, well, the problem we're gonna have here is we just need to put some passes in here. It's because we haven't implemented those functions yet. Uh, we'll just put T equals zero here should be that. So I've actually got the solution running. It's generating the points. It's not plotting them. All it's plotting is a white screen right now, which I can click on the X to get out of. And now what remains to be done is in this game loop to implement the two functions. The first one is update and the second one is render. Update the positions that we need to plot all the masses at and then render it. Update, render, update, render. And the whole time what we're using to update the position is the next step that's coming out of this time-stepping solution.